this firm, uh, Timbuktu, um, that does these bike messenger bags. Bike messengers are the ones who deliver packages in cities like San Francisco. Um, and if you want a bag like this, you can go to Timbuktu's website and order the mass customized version of this where you can specify a different color for each of these panels, um, a different logo color, and you can specify whether or not you want a handle on it and zippered and any number of other options. Timbuktu manufactures these bags in a, in a factory in San Francisco. Um, and when we were interacting with the company, um, they were producing about 20% of their bags were sold to customers on the internet and the other 80% were sold as just kind of standard units in, um, and sold through sporting goods stores such as REI. Um, even though 20% of their volume was the internet orders, um, most of their profit was coming from the internet orders. And they, did, they used a process in the factory where every day they would look at their orders from the previous evening, 20% uh, of which or so would be internet orders, and they would build those first. And then the remaining 80%, they would fill in the schedule with uh, standard bags. We use the term spackling to say that the, the schedule for the custom bags was very rough and bumpy, and they would smooth the schedule by filling it in with their standard bags. At the time of this research, the company was considering moving the production of the standard bags to China, uh, where they could, get a, they could save a few dollars on labor. Um, but they knew that if they did that, it would make it more difficult to manage the production of the custom bags, which would remain in the United States, uh, because they needed the shorter lead time. Um, and they were trying to understand the trade-offs in that decision. They knew how many dollars they could save on labor, but what they did not have a good grasp on is how much uh, it would affect the production costs of the, of the custom bags that remained in San Francisco. For us, it was, much, it was less challenging to find the data. This was a small firm. Uh, the data that we were looking for is demand data. We wanted to understand averages demands and what kind of variability they faced. And we needed some basic cost information um, so that we could plug that into the model. Uh, that information was readily available for us. The models I used are broadly classified as stochastic inventory models. Uh, sometimes we use simulations. Uh, if the models um, are simple enough, or problems that are too difficult tend to not lend themselves to direct analytical models, and so sometimes we fall back on simulations, which can be more broad. Um, but the advantage of the analytical models is that they give you better insights into the trade-offs, that they directly express the trade-offs, and you can understand how those work. Whereas the simulations are sometimes more versatile in, in, in uh, modeling more complex situations.